Hey there, fellow hunters, experimenters, and tinkerers alike. Dan from Creepy Creations here, with just a follow-up to that video that I did about working with AC power supplies. Now, for those of you who've seen that one, you might recall that this was the very typical kind of power supply that you might be working with. And if you've torn open an old PC and ripped one out, this is probably what you ended up with. However, it's been brought to my attention that not all PCs are created equal. In fact, some are a little more proprietary than others and have a completely different design for their power supply. So while you might be working with one of these, which has 12 volts, 5 volts, and all sorts of strange one for volt just kicking out of it, there's some other ones floating around. You might end up with one of these. A little box, wires hanging out of it, looks like a power supply, and you wouldn't be wrong. However, there's one very big difference. These are a very different kind of power supply. Some of the newer PCs floating around, particularly ones built for offices, are actually wired up so that they only require 12 volts. Perfect for working with micro motors, but if you look for the other voltage, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. So I wanted to just show you how you can work with one of these and use it the same way you can to work with uh, the other kind of power supplies when you want to wire up a 12 volt supply for things like a wiper motor or anything else that needs 12 volts for that matter. So, let's take a closer look at what makes one of these things tick. From all outward appearances, these look pretty much the same. Slightly different shape, but same basic principle. You've got an outlet connector for the cord, fan, and some wires with various funny looking connectors on the end. So, what makes these different? Well, a few things. Like I said, first of all, this thing only produces 12 volts, which for windshield wiper motor enthusiasts is exactly what we want. But there's a couple of other differences too. Plug it in. Nothing seems to be happening. And you'd be correct, there is nothing happening. Now, the way you fire one of these things up, actually very similar to how the other power supply works. This connector here has five little wires on it. And if you look carefully, you see there's a green and a black one. If you remember from the other power supply video, those are important too, as that's what helps us turn this on and off, because the power supply itself doesn't have a power switch. No big surprise, the black wire is ground, and the green one is what turns it on. So we'll just use a little piece of wire to connect the green one to ground. Now, one of the biggest differences with these power supplies is When you fire them up, they sound like a jet ready for takeoff. That fan is a little loud. Not to worry though, there is a solution, and it's relatively simple, but it does mean that we have to crack that power supply open in order to do this, because we're actually going to disconnect the fan. It's relatively easy to do, but if you're not comfortable opening one of these things up, then stop right now and maybe look for one of those other power supplies or put up with a fan noise. Personally, it's too loud for anything I'd want to on. So let's take a look at what we have to do. First thing to do is unplug the darn thing. I don't need anybody hurting themselves by getting an electric shock. Next, we're going to have to open the case up. That means taking off this, the dreaded guarantee void if removed sticker. Well, we're not too concerned about that. At least I hope you aren't, because it's coming off. Oops, well, we're committed now, no turning back. In fact, it just needs to be split off down at the bottom here. Now we actually have to open the case up. Fortunately, the manufacturers have taken pity on us and have used regular Phillips head type screws, so it's fairly easy to do. There's three main screws on the case and then two on the top of the fan that we have to deal with. We'll look at the case ones first. There's one here, right above where the power cord goes in. So take that out. There's one here. And then there's one on the other side as well. Don't lose these because you'll need to put them back. Now we'll take the two top screws off of the fan. Only the top ones have to come out. 
They're a little longer than the ones we just took out of the case, so they're easy to keep track of. There. Now, one last thing. The bundle of wires coming out of the top of the power supply are actually held in place on the top plate by a wire tie or zip tie. So you have to very carefully cut that. That's just so that we can take the case off and leave the wires alone. There's that. And it'll usually come off pretty easily. out of the way temporarily and now we need to take the top plate off. It actually curves down from the top of the fan over the body and down the back but it's all one piece and it's all relatively easy to take off. You might need a little screwdriver or something to help pry at it but you shouldn't have to beat on it too hard. See, once you get it started, it comes off relatively easily. The trick here is this little tab here that kind of gets caught into a little notch. So you have to kind of wrestle yourself around with that one just a little bit. That's why it's a little tricky to take off. Just watch it right there. Once you've got it loose, the whole top should just come off. those out of the way, those wires. There you have it. So there, now it's safe to touch. Wow! Just kidding. Anyways, the thing we're interested in is this little white connector right here. That runs to the fan. Because we're not going to be drawing a huge amount of power out of this thing, it's very safe to disconnect the fan because we're really not going to need it. So we just take this white connector, jiggle it free, and leave it inside just like that. And frankly, that's it. We can put the case back together again. So put it on the exact opposite way you took it off. Just make sure that this tab goes inside the back edge of the power supply so it'll seal up properly and it pretty much almost snaps right into place. Now we just put the screws back in, same order we took them out. Two big ones go on the top for the fan. I don't want it to do them up super tight. Just snug. Not like there's anything in there trying to get out. And then the last three little guys. One over top of where the plug goes in. Here on this side tap. And one on this side. And that's it. You're all set to use it. Watch your 12 volts. Simple. Take the little four, connect, four pin connector and probably a good idea if you just take off the wire ties holding these wires together as well. And probably take off the first and the second one. And 
now you just cut free one of the brown and one of the black wires. There you have it. Black wire ground, brown wire, 12 volts. Easy! And there you have it. You can use one of these power supplies to provide 12 volts to any of your projects. Works great. I've already tested it on a wiper motor. You couldn't tell the difference between that one and the other kind of power supply as far as the speed, the power, and the torque goes, so they work pretty much identically. As always, if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of us by now. And remember, stay safe and have fun!